It's taken me about eight years to get up here, so hi. <laughs> oh, wait, your time is up. Wow. This whole day has been perfect, and I think that I definitely have shifted from where I was this morning. What I'm looking for, and this is all just so perfect, is some fine-tuning. I am... Um, when you are in alignment, fine-tuning is the fun part. Yeah, yeah. In is. other words, Esther loves construction, and she just loves the plans, and she loves pouring the foundation, and she loves putting up the structures, and she loves getting the roof on, and she loves it when they put the insulation in and the pipes and all that stuff. She likes all that, but she really likes buying furniture. Yes. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> That's really fine tuning. Yeah. And so what you're saying is you want to just hurry through all of this and get over here. And we want you and Esther to enjoy every stage of it along the way. In other words, savor it all. So rather than saying fine tuning, just say tuning, tuning, tuning. Yeah. Okay. So I completed a divorce last month. I didn't want it. And I feel like I feel like it's all going in the right direction. Where now, how would you know that when you feel like that? <laughs> I feel uh, awful. I'm crying in front of people. <laughs> but I'm just sure I'm going in the right direction. <laughs> it hurts so bad, it must be good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where I'm at with it is... I guess I feel confusion. I adore this guy. And I've loved what we've been talking about today, like really finding the love for him and yet allowing him to go do what he needs to do or have the conditions that he is. So I love being in relationships. That last thing was so perfect. I love relationships so much and I can't wait. The thing about relationships are they are awfully conditional most of the time. Yeah very much so and so it's a nice thing to have a respite from conditions while you focus upon the unconditioned and we were appreciating the words that you were using about loving it so rather than fine-tuning let's general tune here just for a little bit okay. while you tell us in an unconditional way what it is that you feel in relationships that you like so much what's the emotion or the feeling and try if you can not to try to conjure a condition that makes you feel that way just tell us what feels good inside of a relationship to you um, use emotional words if you can emotional words I love to love I love love to love I love to love for no good reason now yes. if you could love to love for no good reason there would be no divorces most people love very conditionally so yes. there are a lot of divorces because I loved you when you were different than that but now you're not different than that now you're that I can't love you yeah he was kind of like the guy's cat so <laughs> <laughs> however that guy's still with his cat yeah it's true <laughs> yeah so I love it's the P to value ratio <laughs> So I love to love. I love co-creating. I love looking forward. I love having another person there with me to see forward and move forward and, and yet have different points of view, but kind of have the same focus. I love sex. You love... <laughs> love that part. You love new ideas occurring? Yes. So that means you love difference. Yes. You love diversity. Yes. So you're not looking for sameness in a relationship. No, not at all. Not at all. So? So I think where I feel maybe stuck. Well, that's not the part of the discussion that we're wanting to evoke from you. Okay. Because stuck is when you start looking at the conditions. Okay. Now that you have completed this divorce, you've sort of closed the door on that for now. Mm -hmm. And yet you're wanting to open another door right away another conditional door another someone to hold as your object of attention or another someone to be the reason that you feel the way you do 
Okay. But we want you to understand that you have had enough relationships. In other words, think about before your first relationship, how many relationships you had that helped you to create a vortex that helped you to know what you wanted in a relationship. Yeah. Esther was listening to a television commercial the other day. It was one of the matching businesses and they were talking about, we will find your true compatibility. And Esther thought about the word compatibility and then talked to us about the word compatibility. And we said, it's a law of attraction word, isn't it? Not compatible in the sense that we like all of the same colors and we like all of the same places and we like all of the same words and we like all of the same things and we like all of the same food. Not compatible in the sense that we are identical, but compatible in the sense that at our core, at our unconditioned, that there are vibrations that we have accomplished and that we foster and keep active so that law of attraction will bring others who share those same core vibrational stances. Because when you are at the core in vibrational harmony, which means you love unconditionally, then the details of your experience can be whatever they are being and it doesn't shake you from your connection with the true relationship that is the only relationship that really matters when we have relationship conversations with people always at the heart of them is I have a relationship sometimes you don't say it because you don't even know it but this is what's at the heart of it I have a relationship with my inner being that I am eternally intertwined with in other words you can't turn off the key that turns off the engine of that relationship between you and your inner being so I have this relationship with my inner being that for some reason this relationship is challenging and what we want to say to you is it does not need to challenge Okay. The only reason it does challenge is because you've been getting the cart before the horse. You've been wanting this condition to be the reason that you connect with source rather than connecting source be the reason that you create these conditions. So that's what's backward in so many relationships. That's why your marriage vows say, we'll, <laughs> let's just not add any more power to those. <laughs> when you are caring about this relationship between you and your inner being first and foremost and in the middle and last in other words that's what really matters to you then you find yourself more capable or practiced as a better word at finding positive aspects wherever you look but when you look to another person and you say to that other person or about that other person you are my primary point of focus and everything that I feel is going to revolve from what I see here so then you start needing to control that to be a certain way so that you can feel this it never works it always ends up in some sort of discord that usually ends up in a breaking apart in some way but when you instead come into alignment with who you are then you're not holding this person to be everything. Now you've got these relationships with these people and these people and these people and these people with life, with animals, with nature, with sunsets, with streets, with subjects, with interesting things, with hobbies and activities and all kinds of things. And this is just a person that you like to be with because you like to be with them, but they are never supposed to be your significant other. Your inner being is always meant to be your significant other. And when you try to make another person be your significant other, they're going to fail you every single time because it is not their job to be all the things that you need in all the times and all the ways that you need them to be that way. Now, we're not for a moment trying to get you to get back together. That's not the point of this at all. But we are wanting, before you attract someone else, we're wanting you to secure, to establish, to define and establish and discover and enjoy an emphatic relationship between you and you. And once you do that, in that unconditional alignment with who you really are, in that consistent offering of that vibration, the universe will give you inspiration 
you will rendezvous with another who at the core is already understanding the importance of that significant relationship and when two come together who each understand what the truly significant relationship is then you will have the freedom to have a delicious relationship otherwise you hold each other in bondage and in the beginning before you know that much about each other it works out pretty well pretty soon you're gonna start being who you really are and if at the core there's not a vibrational sink then it's always going to be problematic